So now that we're starting to get into the actual rigging practices of a trick line, um, we're going to first talk about the ratchet systems. You know, typically, like we, like we mentioned before, typically these are used with two-inch webbing, um, two-inch polyester webbing. It provides a lot of a lot of spring back and stuff for for the big aerials. Um, these are t generally tensioned with high-quality ratchets on either end, so you actually have a double ratchet system. This really allows you to crank down the tension, but then also you know, not wind up the, the pull or the, the ratchets as much if you're rigging longer lines. Each, each ratchet is able to spool up and take in that webbing. Um, some of the things you want to look out for when you're actually getting a trick line kit is you want to make sure that you either get a high quality ratchet or provide, uh, purchase a kit um, from a reputable um, trick line company. So if, you, if you're just coming upon um, some ratchets and stuff, it's really good to, to be aware of actually what you're getting. You don't really want to use a basic beginner ratchet system for a trick line. Some of the differences between those ratchets, as we can see here, is you generally have a longer handle, which gives you a little bit more mechanical advantage and a bigger throw when you're, when you're um, cranking down the tension. Um, you want to also want to look for a, wor uh, a working load limit or a lashing capacity. Um, these are generally fairly synonymous um, terms, but it's just you know, how, the, how the actual equipment is rated from the, whom, whomever may be manufacturing it. Um, you also want to look at um, the number of cogs. A high quality ratchet will actually have two cogs per side as opposed to one. Okay? And then you also want to look at the gauge of the material or the gauge of the metal. You want to make sure it's, it's strong, it's not thin and flimsy because after all this is really what's going to be taking a lot of the load cycles. Um, within the within the rig, all right. So a couple tips and, and tricks when you're actually tensioning a, 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 a trick line, a two-inch trick line, is using bomber span sets, bomber shackles. When you're actually feeding the webbing through, you can you can kind of pull it to the side and make sure you're getting proper alignment, so you're not getting the binding or the or the fraying that the uh, the ratchet would cause if uh, would cause if it's getting spooled up on the side here. And then you also want to make sure that you have um, you know, ample space, plenty of room, good services to land on, and make sure people are aware of what you're doing, definitely if you're in a public space. And then after, you know, once you're done with your session and you need to go to um, detention your slack line, you want to make sure that, um, you know, you, you stay away from the exploding ratchet syndrome when you actually go and actually pull the trigger to release it. Um, it can be somewhat violent, so you want to make sure your, your fingers and hair and all that sort of stuff is clear of it so you don't potentially um, you know, pinch yourself or suck your hair in. Um, another method um, that some slack line manufacturers have, have come out with are these pre-built um, soft release systems. Um, that's something that will allow you to dissipate a lot of the energy, essentially extending out the anchor and then allowing you to, to more, um, less violently at least, um, release, release the ratchet system. And we'll go over um, soft releases in, in one of the other videos as well.